Hey guys, Kevin Lifestyle Overland here, coming to you with a how-to video on preparing for two of the most remote roads in North America, the Dempster Highway and the Dalton Highway. These suggestions will also help you prepare for just about any off-road adventure. We've got a lot of important information to cover, but first, roll that intro. The Dempster, the newest overland mecca for North American travel. What was once a dead-end gravel road to the town of Inuvik in the Northwest Territories of Canada has recently been extended 87 miles across the Arctic tundra to the historic hamlet of Tuktoyuktuk, allowing year-round travel to a place that used to only be accessible by a seasonal ice road. Now the completed route takes its riders to the edge of the Arctic Ocean on a 1,086-mile round trip of adventure. The Dalton, or the Hall Road as it's called by its daily users, was once the only drivable route to the Arctic and recently conceded its title of top overland travel destination in North America to the completed Dempster. This 832 mile round journey through northern Alaska may not share the same cultural experience along its length that its eastern sister offers, but the beauty of the Brooks Range at Adigan Pass and the abundant muskox population may make deciding between the two a difficult decision. That's why we recommend doing both. If you can't squeeze both in your schedule, we recommend watching our overland travel series on both highways to help you decide which adventure you prefer. Whatever your preference, both routes share very similar characteristics when it comes to the necessary preparation for travel to their most remote destinations. In this video, we will share tips and lessons learned from our summer expedition along both of these wild and beautiful stretches of road. Before we get too deep, remember that you can skip ahead or jump back to any topic from the video description. We'll also share a link to our blog post where there will be a video transcript preparation checklist, and product links mentioned here. Planning is a critical step before you even begin preparing your vehicle. Take time to research and familiarize yourself with each route so you know what to expect. Always keep in mind that you are ultimately responsible for you and your co-traveler's safety. At the end of the day, it's up to you to prepare, train, and survive a worst case scenario. This video is only a few suggestions on how we prepare for our travels and isn't intended to be a definitive guide to get you there and back in one piece. I'm not trying to scare you away, but I just want to highlight the fact that these remote locations bring a list of dangers that must be understood and respected. Everyone has a different comfort level and skill level when it comes to self-sufficient situations. If you feel like these routes are beyond your limits, don't be afraid to explore locally while you develop your abilities and or seek out other trusted and experienced travelers who are willing to convoy with you to combine skill sets which will help ensure a successful journey for all. That being said, let's move on to the planning tips. First off, we highly recommend printing or purchasing hard copy maps to take alongside any electronic apps or devices. Technology can fail at any time, but paper doesn't require batteries. If you only buy one hard copy item, we recommend the Milepost Travel Planner. This is the absolute bible when it comes to travel in the North Country and will give you almost a mile by mile information on some of the more popular routes in Alaska and Northwest Canada. For navigation apps, we primarily use Gaia GPS for route planning, tracking, and waypoint marking. While you won't get lost on these highways, knowing where you are at all times may help in deciding the nearest campground, fuel stop, or emergency services. For more info on this powerful app, click the link in the upper right corner or check out the video description. Another handy app to have is called iOverlander and is a user-created database with campgrounds, wild camps, water sources, repair shops, and more. Just be forewarned that not all the data may be up to date and some camping areas may not be legal. Again, you are responsible, so use multiple sources to verify. We use this app in conjunction with the public land layer and guide GPS to confirm what's allowed. The last item in planning is schedule. Both of these routes can be traveled round trip in three days when all goes well. We recommend scheduling five days at a minimum from start to finish to allow for weather or repairs. Now, when should you travel these routes? Most adventure seekers travel these routes between mid-June and late August for the best weather, but all seasons offer their own experiences. Winter travel opens up a whole different set of risks, but will show off this land in its most natural form. We feel that early July to early August would be a safe window if you're attempting to minimize any weather surprises. Moving on to the next topic, vehicle preparation. Your vehicle should be in tip-top condition before venturing out on these remote roads. 
Even minor repairs with basic parts can cost hundreds or thousands of dollars depending on whether or not you need the tow truck to the nearest form of civilization. That's not counting lodging or missed work if you overshoot your schedule, so invest in your venture before setting out with that questionable water pump or wheel bearing. Ask me how I know. A commonly asked question is, do I need four wheel drive for these roads? Well, the answer might be a bit subjective. It all depends on the weather and your vehicle of choice. There were a few times on both roads when mud was two to four inches deep from the rain, and we were very glad to have all four wheels working for us, especially towing a trailer. That being said, we also saw several passenger cars that made it through the same conditions on street tires, so it really depends on your skill, weight, and configuration. I'm talking about the rig. While the list of available modifications for vehicles today can be downright overwhelming, the good news is, is that you really only need one important upgrade for these highways, quality tires. Both the Dalton and Dempster are known for destroying tires, so much so that the U.S. Bureau of Land Management officially recommends two full-size spares for traveling the Dalton. Accounts for many travelers report multiple flats are a standard toll for traveling these roads. You can reduce these statistics by running quality all-terrain tires, including a full-size spare, along with proper air pressure. A frequently overlooked method for protecting your tires and suspension, not to mention your sanity after hours of washboards and potholes, is to reduce your air pressure in your tires. Also known as airing down, this tried and true method not only smooths out the ride, but lets the tires be the first line of defense in protecting the suspension while conforming to sharp objects instead of remaining rigid and causing punctures. This is a nutshell explanation, but you can read more in our article in the video description and determine safe pressure levels for your off-pavement travel. Even these methods aren't a guarantee against foreign debris like nails or screws, so a tire repair kit is another must-have in your kit. These are available for a few dollars at a parts store. Or you can go with this kit from ARB, which has much beefier tools that are easier to use and ensure proper plug installation with the built-in retainer. The next items on your list should be basic spare parts. Extra lug nuts, miscellaneous hardware, fan belts, and hoses are just a few suggestions, but tailor this list to your own vehicle's needs. Don't forget any vehicle-specific tools if needed. And last but not least in the tire category is an air compressor. The selection and price on these can range from $50 to almost $500, depending on brand and features. Basically, the more you spend, the faster and more reliable the compressor. In this situation, any compressor is better than none, so go with your gut. You should also carry a basic tool kit. What does that look like? A ratchet, socket set, wrenches, vice grips, screwdrivers, adjustable wrench, and a hammer are just some suggestions. You can eliminate sizes that don't exist on your vehicle to reduce weight. Now, you can shop all day for recovery gear and find yourself out of money for the trip really fast. There are a lot of products out there, but as long as you keep it on the road, you shouldn't need much for these routes. A minimum would be a tow strap and quality clevis attachments for minor extractions or a tow to the nearest support center. Vibration is the bane for improperly torqued connections. Crawl into your rig before your trip and ensure everything is torqued properly. Checking your suspension regularly as well as your wheel lugs can save you a lot of heartache in the event something starts to work loose. Carrying a tube of blue Loctite will also help keep those loose connections from coming back apart. Up next, and probably one of the most talked about topics, is fuel management. Fortunately, fuel isn't too hard to come by along these routes, but depending on your fuel mileage, road conditions, and fuel stock at gas stops, you may find yourself stranded without some reserves of your own. We recommend carrying a minimum amount of fuel to give you 50 to 75 miles of travel. Just remember when calculating this that lower tire pressure and muddy terrain can reduce your miles per gallon below your usual average, so err on the conservative side when choosing your capacity. Next up, and the most important step of all, is emergency preparation. Ensure that you have a quality, well-stocked first aid kit on board and get trained on how to use it. Poorly administered first aid can sometimes do more harm than good, so sign up for a weekend course that also includes CPR so you will know how to react in multiple situations. Most first aid kits contain a limited amount of basic medication, but it's best to carry a miniature medicine cabinet with a selection of over-the-counter options. A headache, allergies, bug bites, or bad case of heartburn can really put a damper on the traveling spirit. Also, don't forget to bring enough prescription medicine for your travel schedule, including enough for unexpected stops due to weather or repairs. If you don't already have one, make sure your vehicle is outfitted with a quality fire extinguisher. This simple device can mean the difference between a minor flame up resulting in scorched wiring that's easily repaired, or a completely burned out hulk on the side of the road, not to mention the possibility of wildfire as a result. Make sure you have one rated for automobile use and keep it securely mounted in an accessible location. A couple flashlights with extra batteries is another item that might go overlooked, especially if you're traveling during the 24 hours of daylight cycle. 
but these could be indispensable if you're trying to find a missing bolt in a dark engine bay or warn oncoming traffic of your disabled vehicle. We prefer rechargeable flashlights that stay plugged in and ready to go. You're also going to want to keep emergency rations of food and water on board at all times in the North Country. How much to carry depends on your travel party, but we try and keep at least seven days of extra food and water on hand at all times. We like the freeze-dried meal options that are lightweight and compact to reduce storage use. Streams and rivers are fairly abundant along these routes, so water purification system and containers will help keep your weight down if you don't want to carry a lot of extra weight. Weather is the wild card in these regions. An 80 degree day can change the snow in a few hours, even in August. So make sure you dress in layers and be prepared for all types of weather. If you're traveling in the winter, it almost goes without saying that you'll need some serious cold weather gear in the event of a breakdown. Temperatures can dip into the negative 40 degree Fahrenheit range with wind chills below 60. And that brings us to communication. There's very little to no cell coverage on these routes, so an alternate communication method is very important. Unfortunately, satellite phones can be cost prohibitive on a budget, and even rental fees can be hard to swallow for some. So while this may be the most reliable communication method, it might not be viable for everyone. The next best option would be satellite texting devices with SOS capabilities, or a personal locator beacon, also known as a PLB. There are a lot of great articles on the pros and cons of these devices out there, so do your research and choose what's right for you. Personally, we use both. The satellite texting device for keeping in touch with family and allowing them to locate us in the event we don't check in. While the PLB is for true life or death emergencies, since it's the only device required to be responded to by international law and offers higher location accuracy due to its dual frequency. We highly recommend a PLB as a minimum for your kit. If you're a licensed ham radio operator, you'll have the option to use your mobile unit, but be forewarned that there are no repeaters along the Dempster and only two near the Dalton, one located in Fairbanks and one at the other end at Prudhoe Bay. So you'll be relying on Simplex to reach out for help. We don't recommend using this as a primary communication method unless you're experienced and capable of very long range transmissions. And finally, always keep track of where you are and the nearest emergency care facility. Communicate that with others in your group this will ensure you head the right direction in the event of a medical emergency and not lose time going in the wrong direction or attempting to make a decision under stress. Now, moving on to the fun part, the drive. As mentioned before, set your tire pressure to the optimal setting for your vehicle. Take a few minutes at every stop to check for loose bolts, leaks, or tire damage. Ask locals or oncoming travelers about road and weather conditions ahead. Always give larger vehicles the right of way and slow down when passing oncoming traffic to reduce the risk of rock damage. Always drive with your headlights on and frequently clear your brake lights when dusty or muddy. Slow down in low visibility conditions such as rain, fog, or even dense forest in order to give yourself reaction time if a large four-legged animal decides to cross the road in front of you. Only stop when it's safe to do so. Wildlife encounters can be distracting, so always check your mirrors before coming to a halt and don't stop in curves or blind hills. Be aware of soft shoulders when pulling over. It doesn't take much for the roadway to give in bad weather, which could leave you in a ditch or at the bottom of a ravine. Always check on your fellow travelers when you find a disabled vehicle. Never assume a wrecked vehicle or stuck vehicle has already been checked for injured passengers. Remember, it could be you inside, hoping someone would stop. And finally, keep an eye out for aircraft, especially on the Dempster where stretches of the road are designated emergency landing strips. If you plan on staying at lodges or hotels along these routes, be sure to plan well in advance because rooms are very limited, especially in the busy season. If you're camping, ensure you only camp on public land designated for camping use. Keep in mind that the Dempster has many segments of land owned by First Nations, and the Dalton has private oil company sections, both of which are prohibited to public use. Again, the public land and back road Canada map books layers found in the Gaia GPS app work really well for this, along with the iOverlander app. Remember to use caution when camping near streams and stick to the high ground to avoid the path of a flash flood. Torrential rains have also been known to cause mudslides, so scan the area before pitching your tent. And now, for another popular topic, wildlife. If you spent any time watching videos or searching social media for photos along these routes, you've probably seen a lot of bears, moose, caribou, and muskox. While these natives are indeed the highlight of the adventure, they can also be dangerous under the wrong circumstances. That's why you want to always be alert when walking around camp or hiking to a lake or vista. Situational awareness is your first line of defense. Make it a habit to keep your head on a swivel and avoid distractions. Always carry bear spray and make plenty of noise when going through low visibility areas to avoid surprising animals and triggering a self-defense or territorial response. When possible, cook in a separate location before traveling to camp for the night. 
If you do cook at camp, make sure you keep smells to a minimum by keeping food and trash inside a hard-sided vehicle or International Grizzly Bear Coalition approved container or cooler. Clean up immediately after meals and dump rinse water away from camp. Don't forget that many non-food products also smell like tasty treats to bears, such as shampoo, soap, and in some first-hand accounts, even spare fuel. There are many opinions on camping and cooking in bear country, and ours is just another one of those. Again, you are responsible for your own safety, so do your research and adopt the tactics you believe to be the most effective for your travels. Both Alaska and Canada allow firearms for protection against wildlife. But if you are unfamiliar or unskilled with their use, they can become more of a liability than a safeguard. A firearm is an absolute last resort in an animal encounter. It's up to you to avoid dangerous interaction before it starts and only use lethal force when all other options are expended. If you plan on carrying one, do your research when determining what is legal, what permits are needed, and any border crossing declaration requirements. And now for another type of wildlife, more specifically, a type who will no doubt draw some kind of blood during your travels. The mosquitoes. Depending on the time of year you travel, these bloodthirsty wing nuisances can absolutely ruin a beautiful evening at camp if you come unprepared. Bug spray is only one step in keeping these guys at bay. The best approach is to use multiple methods to help minimize their impact. We've had great success with a product called the Thermocell, which uses a low heat source and wafer with active ingredients to create an airborne perimeter of protection. You'll also want to invest in a few hats and head netting to keep the clouds off your face while setting up your defenses or hiking. When all this fails, it's time to bring in the secret weapon, an instant pop-up screen room. When you're just tired of fighting and want to eat dinner in peace, this product proved to be worth its weight in gold. We've written an article on proven tactics, which you can click on here or find in the video description later to help outfit you successfully and avoid being overwhelmed by clouds of hungry insects. We've already touched on weather a bit, but here's a few other tips. Bring a good rain jacket and maybe even rain pants in case you find yourself making repairs in a downpour. Dress in light layers you can add or remove with temperature fluctuations. Be mindful of heavy rain and how it might affect streams when you're selecting a campsite. We were unable to pick up any weather stations along these routes, so striking up conversations at stops was a big help to determining road conditions. One of the greatest features with the Garmin inReach device is that you can get a weather report from anywhere since it's operated over satellite. We use this several times to keep tabs on the weather. Now for a few suggestions on items that will make your trip a bit more enjoyable. Toilet paper. I guess this should be listed up with water and food, but always bring your own stock just in case. You'll also want to bring a small shovel to properly bury your accomplishment and keep the tundra looking pristine. Stock up on groceries in the larger towns because even simple items can cost two to three times more the further north you travel. Be sure and carry cash reserves in the proper currency just in case credit card readers are inoperable. If constant daylight will be a factor for you, bring along a sleeping mask to help you sleep at night. Window cleaner, rags, a gallon of washer fluid, and a rock chip repair kit will help you keep a clear line of sight and take in the views when things get nasty. And finally, while both of these routes share a lot of similarities, there are a few distinctions worth mentioning. The Dempster is 98% gravel and can be extremely dusty or very muddy. The speed limit is generally 55 miles per hour outside of populated areas. One of our favorite parts is the fact that you can camp right on the edge of the Arctic Ocean at the hamlet of Tuktoyaktuk. Yukon Territory Camps offer free firewood with your $12 Canadian camping fee. The longest stretch between fuel stops is from the beginning of the highway to Eagle Plains, so make sure you top off at the card lock. What's a card lock? It's an unmanned gas station where you can scan your card inside a building, select your pump, and top it off yourself. These can be finicky at times. There are two ferry crossings along the Dempster that can be closed as late as early June for ice breakup and mid-October for freeze up. In the winter, travelers drive across the frozen rivers. Verizon 4G LTE is available in Tuk Tuk Tuk. And now for the Dempster's sister further west. The Dalton is 25% pavement, but don't let that fool you. The pavement can be much worse than the gravel sections and has claimed many a tire and suspension component. Take the potholes seriously. The speed limit is 50 miles per hour outside of populated areas. There are no official campgrounds once you reach Dead Horse, but there are several pull-offs outside of town that are great wild camps. Don't let your guard down in Dead Horse. Bears frequent this area and are not afraid of people. You can listen in to the truck drivers on CB Channel 19, which also helps keep tabs on incoming semis. Alaska State Troopers also monitor this channel. The longest stretch without fuel is from Coldfoot to Dead Horse. 
always top off at both of these locations. Verizon 4G LTE is available at Galbraith Camp and Dead Horse. Access to the Arctic Ocean at Prudhoe Bay is only through a paid tour that has to be scheduled at least 24 hours in advance and requires a background check. Okay folks, that wraps up our in-depth suggestions on preparing for two of the most iconic routes in North America. If you're interested in GPS data for these routes, then click the link in the description and consider becoming a patron of our channel where you can get all kinds of exclusive content while supporting what we do. Hope you enjoyed this and found it informative. If you did, slap that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and we will keep more videos like this coming at you. Until next time, safe travels.